Welcome to the Public Speakers Association My Story Series. Today's special guest is Kevin Yoder. Kevin, please take it from here. Thank you. My name is Kevin Yoder and everyone has a story. Before I was asked to do this, I thought to myself, oh goodness, maybe I don't have a story to tell, but I soon got over that because the truth of the matter is, is while my story may not be one that's riddled with trials and tribulations, I have something that I have gone through and I have a backstory that will lend itself to most people. And I want to share that with you today. And then hopefully you'll come away from, from this and, and it might resonate with you. And uh, the reason is because it doesn't have to be that super dramatic or super traumatic backstory and to know that we can come from someplace and then improve it. And then most importantly, um, help others in, in the process. So that's, that's what this is about. It's about my story, where I came from and uh, humble beginnings and what I have gone through in a way that I thought was, was the path to success and how I found that that wasn't serving me as well as it, it possibly could. So let me, let me bring you back. Uh, we've heard, we've all heard of, of the other side of the track. So I grew up in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan area on the other, it was literally the other side of the tracks. And I'm not going to say that I am regret, regretting my, my upbringing. I can just frame it in a way that, that helps people understand that there is these, there are the classes. I'd say I was in a lower middle. And so it has served me. And as much as I might want to go back and be, be angry about that, uh, the things that we didn't get to do and we didn't get to travel and we wore uh, garage sale clothes, I remember well, and my mother was programmed that way. And that's the best that she could do. And that's the best my mom and dad could do. So that brought me to the place of of if I wanted something, I needed to go after it and get it myself. So that has served me. Everything that we go through will serve us. So that served me well. And it brought me into uh, high school and in, in wrestling and, and getting that grit and tenacity there and having to fight for everything. So there's this trend here. It's this fighting. It's this grit. It's this tenacity. It's the idea of if you want something, you've got to fight for it. And while I don't believe that that's not completely untrue, there's just a better way. So as I got into my college career, I was, uh, went down to Atlanta, Georgia. I was going to be a cop, criminal justice degree, and I was on my path. And about maybe a month into that path, I decided that wasn't going to be for me. So I think we can all relate to that in a way. Not all of us, but many of us got into certain paths and then decided that wasn't going to be the thing we did for the rest of our lives. I got into sales, and it's, uh, I never looked back. So I've been a commission-paid salesperson since the age of 25, which means I haven't had a traditional J-O-B, which kind of fits right in the groove of if you want something, you got to go out and get it. And I think that served me well as well, because I don't, I don't need to carry a bucket and then have someone pay me for the bucket. I'd rather go out and, and, and find it and bring it back to the cave after hunting it. And that served me well. But the whole thing is this, is that I got into sales and I got into real estate and with this grit and this tenacity and this backstory of, of humble beginnings and uh, not down and out, but, but just, a, just enough to where I, I always felt like I had to just, just, just work a little bit harder and nothing was ever handed to me and uh, took that into my business world. And what I realized is that I, uh, I was a hard worker and I was focused, but it only got me so far. And there's really three levels. So here's the thing. There's three levels in my business evolution. Level one was getting it and figuring things out and working hard, but doing it all on my own and avoiding some things that I really needed to do in order to be successful based on fear and self-image. And I didn't know that at the time. And I got to a point where I couldn't do any more and I was stuck. And we had a pretty... Uh, challenging time in 2008 uh, with the real estate market. And when that happened, my, I had a couple months where things were just really, really bad. And I came to a, a point where I realized I could no longer do any more. I couldn't bring any more to the table. I couldn't bring any more of myself to the party. So I sought outside resources in the form of coaching, which then taught me how to break through. And then my business doubled and it doubled again and it doubled again. And then it brought me all the way through to 2000 and uh, let's see about 17. 
and that's where the that's the part where again I was using grit and tenacity and I had reached out to an outside coach and influence because I could no longer do this myself so I sought that outside source so there's a trend here but it only brought me so far and again I hit a ceiling of achievement and that was somewhere around 2017 18 the end of 17 and 18 and my business had stagnated and we weren't growing anymore and the reason is because I stopped growing I was no longer growing. So my business, as, as we've, we've heard it said before, is that so goes the, the owner, goes the business. And I'd reached a point where everything stopped. We had been stagnant for about three years and I didn't know what to do anymore. So here I am, a, I'm a father, a married to a beautiful wife and three children. They're looking to me for guidance and support and to be this, this role model. And I, I couldn't even, I couldn't offer more of myself besides love. I knew I needed to do something different because the business wasn't working anymore. It was working. It just wasn't growing. If we're not growing, we're dying and going backwards. And I wasn't growing myself beyond just kind of shelf help stuff, reading books and thinking it was having an impact. But ultimately, ultimately I wasn't having, uh, I wasn't growing personally. So my business wasn't growing. And so I was looking for something. I was looking for I kept on saying to my wife, I said, I need a blueprint. I need some, something to learn, a system. And she'd say, well, what the heck are you talking about? I said, I don't know, but I need something. And I was really seeking specifically. And I learned later on what that, what that looks like is that when we're, when we're looking for something and we're asking and we're asking intelligently, we're very specific with our requests. And I was. And I just, I just had this feeling that something would come my way. And uh, shortly thereafter, it did. So I, I, I had the good fortune of being, uh, of attracting exactly what I was looking for. And as I learned to find as well, is that what we're seeking is also seeking us. I was looking for a mentor. Again, now 10 years after the first time I was looking for, about nine years later, I, I was at this crossroads. Again, I was looking for a mentor, but more importantly, I was looking for a blueprint for learning as a way to, 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 put more into me because I couldn't pour from the empty bottle. My bottle was empty. And in order to be more, do more and have more, I, I had to, I had to learn more. I need to learn about certain ways of being. I had to learn how to be a leader. I had to learn how to show up no matter what the circumstances were and also all things that were foreign to me. So I found a system and a blueprint and my mentor is Bob Proctor and everything changed. Within a very short period of time, I began to realize that I was capable of so much more than I had given myself credit for. In fact, I am no longer in a place where I believe there's something that I cannot accomplish. I've arrived at a place now where the only question I ask myself is not, is not how do I do it? It's, it's what do I want? And from there, I can take decisive action on it and I always do. As soon as I hear something that I want or just make a decision on something, I make a committed decision, I back it up financially and I go for it. And it's not, it's not how do I do it? I'm not concerned with the how part, I'm only concerned with the what is it I want part and I can step into it. And so now we're, a, now I'm a year and a half uh, into this material and I've, now I'm coaching clients on the very thing that I was, that I was stuck with. And what I found is that most people, in fact, 96%, 96 to 97% of the people that are, that are business owners specifically are stuck. They don't, they don't even know they are, but they're stagnant. They're not growing their businesses. They don't know what to do about it. And the reason is there's one, there's one piece, and I'll share that with you here, is the paradigm. The paradigm is a multitude of habits that's lodged in our subconscious mind and it controls 96 to 97 percent of how we show up in the world. And the real challenge with this is that because the paradigm controls our perceptions, it, it controls how we view the world, we don't even know that there's a paradigm controlling it. And I know this when I ask somebody, what do you really want? They, they give an answer that is really watered down and really limiting. And it's limiting because the paradigm doesn't want us to grow or improve. It wants to keep us where we are because our brains are wired for survival and procreation and, and survival and making more of us. It's not 
Our brains don't want us to go out and live big lives. So we've been programmed. We were programmed from young children from the ages of zero and seven when our subconscious minds were wide open and receiving and downloading that data. I downloaded the data from my family environment, which was you have to work hard in order to be successful. Money doesn't grow on trees. This is just the way it is. You can't have that. You shouldn't ask for that. Don't have that. Oh my God, that's for them. And so that's how I grew up thinking. And it's through this content, it's through this blueprint, this, this way of learning and reprogramming the subconscious mind, ri ridding old paradigms, think of it like a plant pulling out of the ground, and then replacing those paradigms with empowering paradigms, those that say, I can do this. Move, you're in my way. I've got a lot of stuff to do. And, and, and then, but do it in a way that is a state of flow. And, and, and leaving everybody that we come in contact with with the impression of increase, which is one of the lessons is people come away feeling better as a result of being around me and my clients and those that are going through this. So I found a way to not only break through uh, natural ceilings of achievement, we all need a mentor. There's not one person that has done great stuff, great things in life without having a guide or a mentor. And, uh, and that's, that's, a, that's one of those secret things that, that the, only those that go through that understand. So a mentor and a blueprint, those are, just, those are critical. A big want, a, a real desire to improve one's life is required. A blueprint for how to do it, and then a guide, someone to guide you through. And in the process of doing that, we uncover how to set big, massive goals that are super big and way out there, so far out there that they, they propel you to take action every single day. They're called a C goal, something that I learned along the way. I never set a big goal before, A, B, and C goals. A C goal is something that pulls you to it, and it's defined by, I've never done it before, it scares me, it excites me and it gets me out of the bed at 4 a.m. without an alarm clock. And finally, I have no idea how to do it. That's the first lesson in, in this program. Setting big goals, learning how to break through our terror barriers. And when we get afraid, how do we deal with that? Reprogramming the mind, changing our self-image. The self-image is the thermostat that controls and regulates the temperature of everything we get in our lives. And it's so strong, we can't outrun it. We can't outrun it. We can't outwork it. We cannot hustle it, which is why I hit that, that ceiling of achievement for so many years over and over again. I was trying to work harder and it wasn't working. So finally, I'm in a place now where my business is winning. I am winning. My family is winning. And if this resonates with you, if this resonates with you, if any of these concepts res resonate with you, we can show you how to break free. We can show you how to break through your natural ceiling of achievement. If you want to know more, go to my website, yodaresults.com and click on, click on contact Kevin. We'll set up a 15 minute call and we'll, I'll ask you a series of questions and we'll, we'll find out where you are. And then I'll, we'll see if this, if this platform, this blueprint for success is what it really what it is. We'll see if it makes sense for you. And we'll go from there. Thanks for listening to my life story. My name is Kevin Yoder with Yoda Results. And my website is yodaresults.com. And I'm wishing you the divine design of your life, health, wealth, happiness, and perfect self-expression.